Beasts, Secrets of Dumbledore. Okay. Just to say that I, I really love um, Harry Potter, but I mm -hmm. never felt the need to watch Fantastic Beasts. I haven't seen uh, Where to Find Them, and I haven't seen Crimes of uh, Grim Grindelwald, uh, but I, I, I will check them out, and I will watch this one just there was so many movies to watch this week with sonic and morbius and ambulance i never got to do the rewatch or the first time watch of the previous two so i haven't seen the new one and uh but i, I can i can tell you everyone that it made 58 sorry it made 58 million in its opening weekend internationally at, in 22 mar markets it hasn't hit the us yet so um 58 million just just put some background to it it's a uh, it's it's a solid start, but it's not that good. I know COVID in China is kind of out of our order in a way as well with most of its theaters, but seventy five percent of the of the box office income for uh, where to find them in Crimes of Grindelwald was from the international box office, not the domestic. And for it to open internationally first at fifty eight million in twenty two markets, I was expecting a little bit better, considering Sonic has already made one hundred and forty million right now. You know, so I I don't know if it's going to get as much as the other two movies, but then there's pandemic, there's HBO Max in 45 days as well, so we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, it's, it I don't know if it I don't know if the Harry Potter fan base that's loved those movies has carried over into the Fantastic Beasts movies as much. You know, my opinion. They haven't as much, and let me tell you why. The first two movies, um, they tried to go opposite of what star wars was doing with force awakens and last jedi in the in the fact that they tried to do something different with you know uh with this franchise rather than just sticking harry potter nostalgia in your face and of course as one could expect that didn't go over well with audiences they wanted that harry potter magic and all that right so i liked the first movie a lot i think it's it's a really good movie even just as a standalone it's a very good movie on its own um and add to that that it happens in the harry potter universe it makes it even better um it's it's just a very good uh, well-made movie with you know heart and there's humor the characters are amazing the story is amazing um you feel part of the universe but also it doesn't rely on any of the harry potter stuff you know just you, you just know certain things like magic is still there and all of that but um the second movie is where it had a lot of issues okay so the first movie um the end of the first movie there was a reveal that nobody uh saw coming when they were watching the movie because the casting wasn't even announced back then um so that was a pretty good review and a lot of people loved that and they were excited to see the second movie johnny johnny depp no i'm just guessing maybe you're right maybe you're wrong <laughs> <laughs> so the second movie happens and there's Johnny Depp as Grindelwald and um, people did not like that movie as much and I don't know if that's got to do with Johnny Depp or it's got to do with the fact that the movie is kind of boring. Um, I liked the movie and it's kind of dark but it's not something that a Harry Potter fan would enjoy, a casual Harry Potter fan would enjoy, you know? So maybe that's the reason also, I don't know, maybe it's J.K. Rowling too, I'm not sure, but that movie didn't perform well. I think that's one of the biggest reasons why um, this movie had a slower start than expected. Um, but maybe, um, yeah, I don't know if like Johnny Depp, uh, Justice for Johnny Depp was trending today as well. Might have something to do with it as well with some fans, I don't yeah. know, maybe. Yeah, that's that's definitely an issue, and yeah. as well as J.K. Rowling. I know. It's true. Yeah. Yeah the the whole the whole J yeah the the whole J.K. Rowling controversy, which by the way they also they got rid of her doing doing the writing for the third movie, and they brought back in Steve Clovis, who had written all of the Potter films. And David Yates is again back directing this one, so he's definitely yeah. one of the yeah. Harry Potter. Right um legends by now like he did uh so many of the harry potter movies he did all three of the fantastic beast movies and i think he did a pretty good job with this one the one thing that this movie has over the previous two i would say is that it brings back the harry potter magic so it gives you those harry I, potter I, moments 
I did notice that in some of the marketing for it as well. Like yes. This one felt a little bit more it literally Harry starts with the Phoenix and Hogwarts in the oh, trailer. Really? Yeah. yeah. But like, I, I, oh, I, yeah. I think it's good to do these new stories and not like be dependent of the old stories yeah. and the old franchise. But then in a way, we're in this kind of nostalgia meta era of these movies that are coming out where you look at Scream, you look at Ghostbusters, you look at The Matrix, you kind of, you're going to piss off fans if you don't really have what they yeah. want in the movies. And uh, there's a way to do it. Yeah. And Hall- Halloween, Halloween as, well. as well. There's a way to do it and there's a way not to do it. But I think you, I think you kind of have to give fans what they want yeah. to an extent, but just not go overboard like the Rise of Skywalker. I think Rise of Skywalker <laughs> is just too much. And I think something like maybe, I don't know, something that's too little. Like I can't think of an example off the top of my head. Just Matrix, like maybe the Ghostbusters, uh, maybe Matrix. Yeah, Matrix went against it a little bit as yeah. well. Yeah, maybe, maybe like completely changing it, like Ghostbusters twenty sixteen with the female cast. Maybe something like that. Like that, that's just don't go that way. It's kind of find that middle ground. And, yeah, and that, 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 that's what I think works. Yeah, I think this movie did find that yeah, middle ground yeah. because it has um, the story focuses. You know, the the whole plot focuses on the Fantastic Beasts element that is definitely in the plot this time. It's not just side characters just roaming around, you know. The plot is very much focused, you know, on a Fantastic Beast. So it is pretty amazing how they did that as well as bring back the old Harry Potter feel and magic and obviously Hogwarts is in some of the trailers so that's already out there. Um, That's there and you have the story also focuses more on Dumbledore and Grindelwald. So Jude Law is let me tell you he's fantastic as Dumbledore and there are some scenes that um, hint at the future of Dumbledore in this movie which we already are familiar with so those scenes are pretty emotional and fantastic uh, very well done and <laughs> his um i don't think that he is mimicking you know the old dumbledores i think he made his own character but it still doesn't feel like he completely departed from that he just feels like a re- younger version of them so he has that dumbledore charm humor and you know um sincerity so responsibility all that he he does portray dumbledore very well and i think i think he he will be one of the biggest draws going forward in the sequels um if those are dumbledore centric as well um and coming to mads mickelson as grindelwald i think um he did a very good job i think uh, you know he has a lot of screen time obviously and uh he is also very centric to the plot and the whole story and message is also very um important it's similar to what x-men uh you know x-men do with uh professor x and magneto where one fights for the rights of you know mutants and one says that you know um you know they're not into mutant superiority or something like that so the same uh concept is with dumbledore and grindelwald grindelwald just uh sees humans or muggles as weaker you know beings so um he wants war with them and he doesn't like that they have to hide all the time so that is um obviously political messages with our world as well but within this world it feels very much um interesting and how they deal with it and dumbledore and grindelwald their dynamic is also pretty good there are some other new characters as well who bring back some similar tropes from old harry potter movies so that's also pretty good um so yeah if you are a harry potter fan you will enjoy i think this movie more than the previous movies but if you are a fantastic beast fan i think you'll enjoy this movie uh, maybe more than the first one or as good as the first one i i know that uh, the grindelwald character has been played by three different actors now colin farrell yeah and then johnny depp is that the way it worked maybe <laughs> Well, I know that uh, part. Yeah. I know that. Okay. The, the, <laughs> yeah. I know that part. I know that part. Damn what it. I'm, what, what, what I wanted to get, what, yeah, what I wanted to get to was, uh, was, is, it, forget all the kind of exterior stuff, personal stuff. Is Johnny Depp, um, is, is his absence felt in this one? Uh, do you think that you know there was something missing with him, or did Mad Mickelson, Mads Mickelson make you forget him because well, the character can shape shift into different avid bodies, different looks. No, he can't shapeshift. He he he's just recast. 
They don't. Ma- they don't address it. <laughs> yeah, I know. But, I know uh, did, yeah, yeah, I got. Re- I got it's, it. it's just a complete recast, is it? They didn't do it like they yep. did with Colin Farrell into Depp. No, it's just you're supposed to pretend that this is Johnny Depp. Something happens the in the first movie with that with Colin and Johnny, but this one is uh, you know specifically a recast. It just they just don't mention. He just looks like that. <laughs> Really? So it's not like they walk up to him and say, "Oh, Grindelwald, nope. you look a little, you look a little nope. different." No, but the the thing is, uh, to your question, Mar, I did go into the movie obviously questioning that myself because I'm not a huge Johnny Depp fan, nor do I hate him. He's just he's just some good a good actor for me. Um, so I I didn't exactly love his performance in the second movie, but I didn't hate it. I thought it was pretty good. Um, uh, so. It's not like I was attaching this character to Johnny Depp, right? So in the second, uh, in the third movie, Mads Mikkelsen took over. I don't think general audiences even care who that is. You know, um, they just liked his performance. I think. So yeah, performance-wise, he did pretty good. He obviously plays a great villain. He's a great actor. Um, so he was awesome in the role, and I didn't feel like. Um, John Depp would have been would have done better, or not having him is better. You know, I think either one could have done a good job. Um, Johnny, uh, maybe if you are a Johnny Depp fan, you might think that his villainous role would have been better in this movie because there's something to his performance as a villain that people like. So maybe that aspect was missing from this character. But it didn't feel like he was less evil or more evil in this movie because of the casting change, you know. And um, Ezra Miller's character, I, I think I've gathered as well, he's some sort of powerful wizard or maybe too powerful. How was Ezra Miller in this one? He was pretty good. Yeah, um, I think he was the best so far. Um, he was awesome in the. Um, he was in the first movie, right? Yeah, he was awesome in the first movie. I yeah. liked him a lot as Credence, but in here, I think he gives his best performance because he is just Ezra Miller in this. And he is very confident. He is not like that um, mumbly character that he was in the first movie. He is very confident in this one, very troubled, and... Um, <laughs> <laughs> and it, he had he has a different look um so i think he his character also improved in that um aspect as well he is also par- big part of the story so that is also good i'm just curious as to how wb will handle um his situation going forward um because he's a pretty key part in this movie i i do wonder if this movie doesn't you know do well uh, the- but uh, it'll probably do well, but it might not do like stupendously well. I wonder what their their plans would be going forward because they did have a five story arc plan. Yes, and we all know the Warner Brothers and their arcs and their plans. But it is a Harry Potter franchise. Like these movies should be making a lot of money. Like, yes, I, I I was kind of talking about it on Twitter today, and people were like, "This is it's doing okay. It's still called America and stuff like that." And I talked earlier about seventy five percent of the box office for the first two was internationally, but like. We've, we're, we're in the stage of the pandemic where some movies just do really well. Like Spider-Man No Way Home did just like better than pre-pandemic numbers, you know? It did really well for itself. Venom did really well too for itself. You know, yeah, while other movies uh, did well. Um, you know, Bond. J- James Bond. Like, Bond. These, these, are, these are movies that, yeah. these big massive movies, Spider-Man, Batman, James Bond, they've, been on, they've kind of been unfazed in a way by the pandemic, you know? Uh, and they've just people have just really wanted to see these movies. We're talking about Harry Potter here, Harry Potter franchise. Uh, it, it just feels to me on the outside that this should be doing better. It should be. It should have more hype around it. It should be. It should be up. It should be up. To, like Sonic made, made seventy million domestically. You know, internationally in twenty two markets. Maybe it could have got maybe a little bit higher. I don't know. I just maybe maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I, I'm I'm looking at it in a different way. But I just think that this is Harry. This is a franchise. This is Harry Potter franchise. Yeah. It should be doing a lot better. Maybe, maybe, be. maybe the executives are thinking like that, and they're just frustrated yeah. as to what to do. So they just inserted a lot of Harry Potter elements in this movie. But I think it yeah. didn't feel forced. It feels like they, um, they had that, you know, you know, very much in the plot. So I didn't feel like they were just, oh, look, 
we let's go to Hogwarts and play some Quidditch yeah. and all that. It didn't feel like yeah. that. It, it felt like very, you know, within the plot. So I like that um, because I am, you know, someone who doesn't like that force nostalgia and all that. I liked how Fantastic Beasts was a separate thing, um, even though, you know, it is in this universe it didn't feel like every single time you're walking you're seeing something oh look that's the hogwarts oh look that's uh hermione's grandmother or something like that yeah. you know um yeah. i feel like this this movie did a pretty good job at walking that fine line so i i feel people will be very much happy with this one uh particularly especially harry potter fans and and the general audiences as well because you know everyone loves harry potter um so that um with that said i also feel like this movie will have legs um and i don't think that the domestic release also will be that huge um especially because of the type of film this is and how the story is i don't feel like it will just grab the general audiences into the theater and all that especially when sonic is playing like <laughs> that movie is amazing <laughs> Um, I haven't seen it, but from the trailers itself, it looks amazing and a lot of fun. So naturally, people and their kids will just go watch that movie instead. So that's the reason I think this movie will have legs. Maybe if they keep playing this, because they are marketing it like crazy. Like every single day, I see a damn notification from WB Channel about this movie. Um, this, uh, the, this kind of thing happened with The Batman, where every day they just send out notifications and trailers and TV spots. They're doing it with this movie as well so i think they should uh i don't think they should put it on hp max in 45 days I think they should hold off a little bit i don't think they don't can see... yeah probably not but like I, batman is kind of stalling now at the box office because you know like I, i'm gonna wait for it to hit streaming like i like I, I i was busy and you know money and stuff like that but i didn't feel like i needed to go see batman a second time that kind of way I said, oh, I'll just wait 45 days. I can see a lot of people waiting, you know, for like these movies to hit streaming because it's not that yep. long, really. You're only waiting really a month and then it's hitting streaming and you can just sit down and watch it at home because the people they get in the, the phase of staying at home watching movies. And if you see it once in, once in theaters, oh, sure, I'll just, I'll see it again in a month at home. So it's like that can be against it as well. And maybe on the other side of this, there's analytics, there's there's numbers coming in on, the, on HBO Max and on these streaming services where the executives are, are pretty happy. You know, they're they're getting the viewership into their streaming servers, they're getting subscriptions, they're getting buzz around the brand. So maybe maybe box office, I don't think it is, is like the, the concrete element of whether a movie does well or not anymore because in 45 days it's on a streaming service. And if they really depended on box office, they just keep it in, in, in theaters. They wouldn't be putting it onto a streaming service, but they are. So there obviously is some side of it there that we don't get in full full figures, you know, where it's it's that is it is beneficial to them. So I think we have to take into streaming as well, even though there's no like massive there's no like numbers we can look at and say, Oh, this is a, this did well on HBO Max or not, you know. But I think there must be there must be a reason behind it if they're so eager to get them onto the streaming services absolutely i mean especially now with the merger um coming to a close which we'll talk about in just a bit um they are very streaming focused so they need i, I look if you ask me i would say that the 45 day window is even that is too long i would i if if it were me i would put a 30 day window straight up just one month but i understand that yeah. they need to make money and all that but if they are streaming focused i would definitely say that you have to go 30 day but they also have to please the theatrical you know owners and those people also need their cut right so right. that's the reason they have to keep this window a bit longer because if they don't if they don't cooperate with the theatrical you know exhibition owners they will fuck up their movies they need the exhibition owners to be good with them so they can get you know um their movies good exposure and then perform well yeah no that's a good point and yeah. uh rokan have you seen the movie no fantastic Beasts doesn't come out here until i believe wednesday or thursday or some uh, around that time so i do plan on seeing it because i do love harry potter you know i was a kid i was a kid when the harry potter films came out and my sister is the biggest harry potter fan that i know so i'm gonna take her to go see it um but i did i do enjoy the fantastic beast movies i think i, I enjoy the first one more than the yeah, second one just because i just like 
the tone of it better. The second one I like for how it shows how an evil following is created. Like yeah. I like how it goes into that. But and Jude Law is great as Dumbledore. But uh, yeah, I all I can say is I'm glad it's I'm glad you you dug the third one. I can't wait to to see uh, to see it once I once I get the chance. It's funny you mentioned though that uh, they even seen the marketing everywhere for it because. Literally, like, we're sitting down to watch Sonic, and they'd shown the trailers during Sonic, and one of the trailers they'd shown was a Fantastic Beast, Harry Potter, comp- montage oh, type of trailer. Nice. So that was pretty funny. Yeah, I thought, it was, I thought it was pretty funny. I was like, wow, literally just a few days before we get a, a, fan, a Fantastic Beast Yeah, I Beast think trailer. that's the general consensus, right? Like, even if people didn't like the second one, they most of them liked the first one movie, but even those who like both the movies, they... They all agree that um, it's somewhat missing the Harry Potter magic, right? But for from this movie, I yeah. would say they brought it back. Just personally, I would say they brought it back cool. because I'm not something. I'm not someone who missed that per se, but I did. I did understand why people are saying it. Uh, but with this one, I think they won't complain. Yeah.